Some of you guys might not know this, but we here at Jetavision are pretty big fans of Warhammer 40k. After all, we do collect the miniatures, and who knows, we might even paint some of them. God forbid, we might even play a game on the tabletop. Regardless, with all the 40k shovelware, I mean video games, we were curious to see if anyone had ever gotten around to making a VR adaptation to its setting. And to some surprise, we actually found out that there is such a game. I'm Mac Cheese, the host of the Jetavision, and tonight we're reviewing Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sister. It was actually a bit of a surprise to actually find a Warhammer VR game out in the wild because I never heard anything about it. You'd think such a title would garner at least some attention from the Warhammer community, and yet the only reason we know about it is because we had to actively look it up. Not a good sign. Battle Sister is technically a story-driven experience. From what I could gather, you play as a character named Ophelia, a character within the faction of everyone's favorite dommy mommies, the Sisters of Battle. After participating in a battle which sees one of your friends dead, your spaceship comes under attack by Chaos forcing you to evacuate to a nearby barren desert planet. You meet a fellow sister in Black Templar Space Marine, and you fight your way off. You then meet up with an Inquisitor, who I guess sends you off on a mission to take out a Chaos-aligned Psyker, who is your biological sister, who apparently died, but not really, because she's still alive and turned to Chaos, or something like that. Something about a Necron tomb world. So based on how I'm describing the story, you can kind of tell what my first complaint of the game is gonna be. Like I said, it's technically story-driven, but if I'm gonna be straightforward about it, it's not something you're gonna care about. The game just kind of bounces around from plot point to plot point with no real sense of progression, meaning or the feeling that you're actually moving towards a central objective. One second you're in the trenches, the next you're stranded on a desert planet after your ship gets attacked, now you're on a mission to board a Chaos spacecraft, now you're raiding a tomb world trying to find a Psyker or something. It feels very cobbled together. When the game ends, you don't really feel like you did anything. There's no sense of a satisfying closure. And being a story-driven game, there's also characters. They suck too. Your, I don't know, best friend who you've apparently fought with for the past 10 years dies at the beginning of the game, and then she's never brought up ever again. Mr. Inquisitor Man is just some guy who gives you missions. The sister and space marine that accompany you throughout the game literally just exist, and they contribute no personality. The very character that you play as may as well just be a lifeless husk, in spite of the game trying to give her some sort of destiny. I could nitpick some more, like for instance, they randomly introduce conflict amongst the characters with no actual buildup. It just kind of happens randomly and is then swiftly hand waved away. But it's not worth going over the story because, again, you don't care about it. Which, hey, maybe that ain't such a bad thing. As long as the gameplay's alright, who cares if the story sucks? As far as the graphics go, whew. I mean, look, it's an Oculus port, and I guess it's a pretty small studio that made this game. So I don't want to rag on it. But then again, I really don't feel like this is a game that finds a home in VR. It looks like a PS2 game, and frankly, it doesn't even feel like it tries to fit in with the whole grimdark aesthetic that 40k is known for. All in all, it just looks bland and generic, and it never captures the feeling of truly being in 40k. And then there's the little things. The explosion effects look like they took one of those green screen videos from YouTube and just put them in the game. Bullet holes that are shot into walls appear to be floating over them. And the Chaos Marines are actually kind of lame. You'd think they'd be heavy and imposing, being in VR and all, but they're rather unintimidating. Overall, the graphics can definitely do with a touching up. The guns in the game are okay. The game gives you a wide variety to use, from typical bolters and las guns to the more unique melted guns and flamers. They handle okay, but there are some issues that I have with them. For example, weapon holsters on your hip are put in such a weird spot that when you want to grab one, you have to actively look down at your body to make sure that you're grabbing in the right spot. Aiming over long distances can also be tough because there's no feeling of weight to the weapons that would help stabilize the aim, so you better have the hands of a surgeon, otherwise your iron sights are gonna be pretty jittery. And the recoil is done pretty weirdly. When you fire a gun, it lurches back in a really weird weird way. There should obviously be recoil, but not like this. The game also gives you these powers. Basically, you press the button on the controller and make a hand gesture, and it grants you an ability. You can push things back, slow time, or raise a shield to render you invulnerable. You will mostly forget about these abilities, save for when the game arbitrarily sets up an obstacle that requires you to use them. Uh, every now and then a character will talk to you over a radio to tell you what to do. The problem is, the sounds of battle around you are louder than the game's dialogue, so half the time you can't hear anything and you're on your own, bud. Honestly, similar note, for such a linear game, it does a poor job of guiding you to the right spot. The game will want you to go through a door, but then you're thinking, well, which door? There's only five of them and only one opens. There's a point in the game where you have to climb these 
things in order to get inside of a building, but the game never establishes that these are indeed things you can climb with your hands. So I ended up looking around this area for like 10 minutes until I found it out via a YouTube tutorial. The second worst thing about this game has to be the combat. If you don't know, bolters in the 40k universe shoot what are essentially miniature rockets that embed themselves within its target and explodes inside of their body. But in this game, they may as well shoot regular bullets. Chaos Marines are able to tank what feels like entire magazines of them. Even the Chaos Cultists, which realistically should only be cannon fodder, can take quite a bit of punishment. Even forgetting that the game pretty blatantly ignores the sheer power that a bolter should have, having to pump so many rounds into an enemy makes the game feel unresponsive, unsatisfying, and just not fun. The only guns I found fun to use was probably the plasma pistol, because it really didn't require many shots to kill an enemy, and the melted gun because it's able to one-shot most enemies at close range. Melee combat speeds things up a bit, although much like shooting, it leaves a lot to be desired. It really doesn't feel like you have to put much into it, all you really have to do is to shake your controller against the cultists that charge you willy-nilly and you'll do just fine. And then when you go into melee with the chaos marines, it feels like you're slapping a box made out of solid concrete with a stick you found out on the sidewalk. There's nothing that this game has to make the melee feel engaging and responsive. Not to mention that the plasma and chainsword, the only two dedicated melee weapons, don't feel any different from one another. And then there's the issue of player health. While enemies can certainly tank more shots than they feasibly should, the same is not true for the player. You can die pretty quick in this game and there's really not a lot you can do to prevent that. The game does have a mechanic where you can deflect shots with your sword Star Wars style, which works to mixed results. Or you can make use of the ability that renders you invulnerable just for a short time, but the best strategy is literally just running around like a chicken with its head cut off, frantically teleporting as far away from combat as possible so that your health can regenerate before joining the battle once more. It suffice to say, if the goal of this game was to make you feel as if you were truly a sister of battle, it has failed spectacularly. I don't feel like a zealous super soldier blasting and slashing her way to victory, I feel like I'm constantly fighting an unfair uphill battle. But it's like I said, combat is just the second worst thing in the game. The first is combat is literally the entire game. You go to this arena style part of the map, a bunch of enemies come in, you take them all out, and then you go to another arena style part of the map to do it all over again. Overall, it's a pretty arcadey experience. This is not a game where you are to explore or solve puzzles. The game centers around combat and only combat. It's not bad for a game to only do that one thing. The problem arises when that one thing it does, it does horribly. The entire game is this exhausting, repetitive, poorly implemented combat system. Ergo, it is not fun. Luckily, it is something that we didn't have to suffer through very long. The length of this game is around 4 hours and we actually beat it in less. So overall, it's a pretty short game. It does have some post-game content, a mode called Last Bastion, essentially a wave defense mode where you kill enemies and get points to upgrade your weapons. It's a decent idea for a mode and who knows if the combat in this game was good, it might have been fun, but it didn't retain my interest for very long. Look, I just beat a game with the worst combat system imaginable. There was no way I was going to play an entire mode dedicated to it. But the glitches, mm, those are just the cherry on top. Every time you load back in after dying, the weapons spawn just floating above your hands. Every now and then you reach a segment that the game hasn't loaded in yet, so it's just this blank space. I remember getting caught in the floor once and getting launched into the stratosphere, so... There's that. So Warhammer 40,000 Sister of Battle just isn't a good game. It doesn't immerse you in the 40k universe, it doesn't create a compelling story, and it doesn't at the very least create a fun game. I'm gonna give this one a 3.5 out of 10. Fortunately, I just can't recommend this game. Even if you're a Warhammer fan, even if the game's on sale, it's a painful experience to slog through. This is shovelware, plain and simple. Not worth your money, not worth your time. And look, I don't like having to say that. I mean, you just know that we're not getting a VR Warhammer game for a long time. So the fact that this is the only thing that we're gonna have for a good while, it hurts, man. It hurts. In the meantime, you can always play the tabletop game in VR. At least that could do the setting some justice. And that is our review for Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sister. Now, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. If you want to keep up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join our Discord server. MacGista, Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good one.